Let's set up backup exec notifications in our backup exec 20. So let's go up to the upper left hand corner, click on there, go to where it says configuration and settings, and then we go to alerts and notifications. Then we're going to go to the email and text notification to start with. So we'll click on that. Now we need to put in an email server. So if this is going to be uh, an internal email server, you can just put in the, whatever the name of the server is and you're good to go. But if this is an external email server, you'll have to get the various different uh, you know, names and information in order to do that kind of thing. So for instance, if it's Office 365, it might be smtp.office.com. Now the port number may be 25. That's again, if it's internal, if it's external, it may be 25 or it might be 587. It, you know, it could be several different ports. You have to find out from your particular provider in order to do that. Let's go ahead and change this back to mail. Now we have the sender name. So the sender name is going to be the name that shows up when you get the uh, email from backup exec. So let's just go ahead and put administrator because that's what we want to show up. And then the email is going to be administrator at techpublishing.com. Of course, you'll use your email address. So if you have a link set up with your Exchange server internally where you allow relaying from the IP address of the uh, backup exec server, you don't have to put in any type of authentication. However, if you don't have it set up that way or you use an outside service like um, Office 365, then you will need to put in that information. So as far as a username, again, if it's Office 365, you would put in administrator at techpublishing.com and then you would put in whatever the password is. Um, sometimes if it's internal, it might be set to put in the, the name of the Active Directory domain backslash administrator. So if one doesn't work and you're using internal, then just go ahead and use the other one. Now, what if you're using uh, an organization like Google Docs, you know, using Gmail, that kind of thing? Well, I don't really consider that a professional service. So if I were you, I would go to uh, Office 365 or an Exchange server, something on site, uh, because Google does make it very difficult to do uh, this type of work. So let's go. It's fine for schools and, and universities and things like that. But for real business, you got to use something like Office 365 or an inside Exchange or other type of mail server. So when you're all done, you just go ahead and click OK. And so that part of it's done, but there's more to come. So we're going to go to the uh, button once again, and then configurations and settings, notifications. And now we're going to go to notification recipients. So we've added the link to the server, but now we have to add a recipient for that server. So we'll go ahead and put in administrator once again, and we'll put in send notifications by email. There we go. And you can click send a test mail to see if it will go. You can also say send no more than one email within one minute, or you can you know, change that as well. So you can get multiple notifications. If you want, you can also put in text message alerts. So you put in the cell phone number that you want to put in and the, uh, the text message service provider address. Now, if you don't have that, say it's AT&T or T-Mobile or Verizon, whatever it is, you can call them on the phone or you can go to their website support area and you can look that information up. But you do need carrier information for that to work. All right, so once that's all done, we can go ahead and click OK. Now, there's one more thing we have to do, and that is we have to double click on our job and so we can go into it, or right click, I'm sorry, and choose Edit Backups. And we'll choose the backup that we would like to edit, and it's going to be our scheduled backup. And click OK. And from here, we've got to choose the correct information. There we go. And now we'll choose Edit. And we'll choose Notification. And look at that. Administrator pops right up for the full and the incremental, the two different jobs. And we can see that uh, those particular users were automatically added after we had added them into the alerts area. Once you're done, you can just click OK, and then you can click OK again, and then your notification should start sending to you whether a job was successful or whether it failed. So that's how you set up alerts and notifications in Backup Exec 20. Yeah. <clears throat>